Big ass rat four. Where's the rat? So as part of our big ass rat four installment, we're extremely fortunate. Uh, there's gonna be a rally today. Some of the biggest labor luminaries in the city are here down on Flatbush Avenue to support LIUFF and our strike and none more distinguished than Professor Stanley Aronowitz. So I'm gonna take a few minutes and uh, talk to Professor Aronowitz. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. First thing that comes to mind is uh, in this climate, we keep hearing, and we've kind of been hearing from the administration, uh, what are you guys out of your minds in this current economic uh, condition asking for raises uh, based on, on, your, on your salaries? Uh, what we've been offered so far, a lump sum. So w what's your reaction to that? Well, a lump sum is, a, is not a raise. A lump sum is a bonus. And uh, if we have an inflation rate in this country, an actual inflation rate, I don't care what the Bureau of Labor Statistics says, of more than 3%, because the, uh, because the Bureau of Labor Statistics doesn't count food. Isn't that interesting? And doesn't count <laughs> housing. And in New York City, food and housing is what everybody pays. Um, then the lump sum, you know, you pay your debts or you pay what you need right away. But the raise gets built into your pension, the raise gets built into your health care, the raise gets built into your way of life, the, your, your whole lifestyle. So it's a very different kind of, uh, of an increase. And uh, what I think is happening here at LIU is very important, and the reason it's important is because it is one of the first instances where a university acts like a corporation and begins to mimic Companies like Verizon, which despite the fact that they're raising much more money and earning much more money than they ever did, still demand concessions, still demand cuts. And, uh, we're, but we're seeing here one of the first instances where the professors are taking the fight to the administration rather than the administration simply taking the fight to the professors. So of course, uh, I'm lucky enough to be on the negotiating team, and I f heard firsthand from the administration and their uh, attorney uh, words to the effect of a strike, uh, we, even when we authorized a strike back in the spring, and that's just a pro forma vote. Uh, we got static from the administration about that. So I'm going to ask Professor Aronowitz uh, about that and, and this general uh, perceived consensus that uh, to strike in this economic climate uh, is just uh, suicide for the union. What do you think of that, Professor? Well, I think it's foolish and it's, by the way, historically wrong. In 1933 and 1934, this economy was in the pits, it was in the, the sewer, and some of the most successful and the most militant strikes were held by the garment workers, by miners, by textile workers, by transportation workers, and they defied the idea, the same ideas, the same complaint was, you can't strike because we're in the middle of a depression. The truth of the matter is, it's never a good time to strike. They'll always find reasons why this is not the right climate. But the truth is that in, 19, in, the, in the early 1930s, when the fight was taken by the workers, because they had really taken four or five years of very, very serious defeats, they decided that they better rise up regardless of the climate. And I think the climate is made by passivity. The climate is not something, uh, just like our climate, our, our external climate is made by human intervention, the political climate is made by people sitting there and taking it on the, uh, on the chin rather than fighting back. An excellent way to put it. Well, like everybody else, I depend on myself when we send it out videos. Uh, to the big, big ass rat channel, but uh, I'm expecting a call from my girlfriend in Jackson Heights. I want to give it. If the phone's dead and she calls, I get cursed out in Spanish. Terrible, terrible things. Luckily, I don't understand it, but still, nonetheless, I feel the ire. So I'm going to ask uh, the LIU security guards if they'd be nice enough to let me cross onto the campus and charge up my smoke. No. What? What are your instructions? Not to let back in. What are, what's the official not, uh, what about students? He brought my phone in for me, but no, faculty's not getting in, right? Take off, uh, right. 
I'd be officially crossing the picket line. These guys have kicked my ass. Uh, Michael Pelius especially, will you strong on contact? I know. There's no way to talk. I'm going to miss the call. It's Friday. I'm expecting a call from my girlfriend. I'm a man, right? I have urges. And because these guys aren't going to let me in without taking my stuff, I can't. I'm not going to be able to talk to Brenda. <laughs> All right, guys. It turns out the only way I'm getting in there to charge my cell phone, get Brenda's call, i got to take the blue shirt off. And I don't want to miss this call, so here goes. Brenda, lo siento mucho, muchacha. Mañana es a possibility. Sábado, comida de pollo listo. Muchacha, mucho lo siento. Mañana, mira. Day three, LIUFF strike. And uh, we want to say goodbye to you guys out there in rat land. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Same rat time, same rat station. <laughs>